Hello Creepy Cassettes, welcome to Creepy Cassetti, your place for horror in reality and beyond. I am your host Dee, bringing you a pretty sad one today. Today we are going to be discussing the dark history behind your favorite disinfectant, Lysol. So let's get into it. Contraceptives aren't new. As a matter of fact, the first condom was created sometime around 3000 BCE. A horror in and of itself may be that these condoms were made out of animal and fish bladders or intestines. Thankfully, by 1855, the condom that we are most familiar with, the rubber, was invented. And if that grosses you out, you'll gag to know that ancient Egyptians circa 1850 BCE would use crocodile dung and honey molded into tablets and inserted into the lady parts. It's thought that the dung's low pH was spermicidal and the honey was used for its antimicrobial properties, killing the bacteria in the poop. So with some of the earliest civilizations using creating their their own contraceptive methods, you would think that people by the 1800s would be more accepting of birth control. However, that was not the case, not at all. In fact, for the first half of the 20th century, trying to get condoms and other forms of contraceptives would require an examination and a prescription from a doctor. And it wasn't until 1965 for married couples and 1972 for single people that contraceptives became readily available. That being said, the market for people who wanted the fun of intercourse without the responsibility of crotch goblins never stopped. Instead, people, and especially women, had to find other ways to control their fertility. Douching was initially sanctioned in 1832 by American Dr. Charles Knowlton as a form of contraceptive, as a sort of primitive version of Plan B, not in pill form, used after the naked tango. And here's where Lysol comes in. You see, Lysol was advertised as a feminine care product, or douche. They even went as far as creating jellies, foams, and spray. Between 1920 and 1960, before the first birth control pill was available, douching was the most popular form of contraceptive, even gaining the prestige of being called the best-selling contraceptive of the Depression era. While they used the term feminine hygiene products, the underlying advertisement was that Lysol could wash away those pesky little sperm cells. But as it seems to be the case with using dangerous chemicals within a body, many people immediately regretted their choices. Prior to 1953, Lysol contains a phenyl compound known as Cresol. This compound caused burning, inflammation, damage to the women's living tissue, and even death. But that didn't stop the company from heavily advertising the product as an asset to women who wanted to keep their lady parts fresh and keep their man around. Some even gave the impression that maybe the reason that women's husbands were not as attentive as they used to be was because they were not as clean. The ad's intent was to make the woman completely responsible for any marital disharmony by preying on major insecurity for most women, even in today's age. They even went as far as to aggressively market the chemical as safe and gentle, despite evidence to the contrary. The Lysol was sued many times, and each time the cases were overturned and covered up. Anybody else smell hypercapitalist bull****? By 1911, doctors had recorded at least 193 Lysol poisonings and at least five deaths attributed to the use of Lysol as a douche or contraceptive. Douching didn't even work. A study that took place in 1933 on 507 women who used Lysol as a contraceptive reported that nearly half still ended up getting pregnant. All that pain, literally no gain. There were even some highly respected physicians who promoted Lysol. Dr. Joseph Lee, respected obstetrician, suggested that Lysol be used during childbirth to reduce the amount of infectious matter carried into the uterus during birth. In 1953, the formula was changed to include less Cresol and replaced most of the chemical with orthohydroxy diphenyl, making it less corrosive. However, they still marketed the disinfectant as a feminine hygiene product. Lysol as a douche would not begin to lose its popularity until 1960s when birth control became more readily available. Perhaps the most horrifying thing was the level of misogynoir and shaming that went into these ads. Just a note, ladies, while we have come a long way from the dark times of Lysol douches, douches are still used regularly by a lot of women. However, the vagina has its own internal cleaning system, so avoid using foreign products up there as much as possible. And if you have continued issues with smells, consult your physician. You could be dealing with an infection. It's important for you to get the right products with the least amount of side effects from someone who understands the science of sexual health. So what do you think about Lysol's dark history? Let me know in the comments below and come back and join me for the next one. I hope you have an excellent day and remember, don't use Lysol in or on your body. It's not meant for that type of cleaning. Have a good one, guys.